good. <coughs> okay, it's 3.05, so let's get started. So, uh, just a big day, obviously, so uh, 2.05 the night, yeah. Is this, is this the relevant, is this the day on the exam, like this type of thing? What do you think? I, I think so. What was the last thing that we covered? I'm not sure that song was going to be on it. Okay. So, uh, just to announce, uh, just one announcement, I guess. Uh, homework three is out. Uh, part one is due not this Sunday, but the one afterwards. And part two is due the Sunday afterwards. After that. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, uh, it's actually a pretty cool homework. Uh, it's about like uh, a bunch of teams fighting and then. Uh, some teams drop out after a while, and then it's actually pretty cool. So, all right, so any questions before we get started? Yeah. Wait, like any questions about anything or what we read last week? Well, probably related to the class. Not like <laughs> Brian, what's your, not Brian, what's your favorite color? But. Um, can you, is it possible to talk about like converting an NFA to a regular grammar? How would you convert an NFA to a regular grammar? Uh, yeah. All the things that can be used in the NFA are the Yep. So, so states of the NFA or DFA doesn't matter. Uh, and those will be the variables of the grammar. And how do the transitions work? Yeah, so since the states are variables in the grammar now, the transition, say, from uh, state S to state T on input A, whatever, then S will now produce the terminal A followed by the variable, which was the state T. So, and so that's good and all, but how do I determine, uh, since all the right-hand sides now have just a single uh, variable, I'll never be able to produce anything, so how do I make a variable drop out? Well, if it's a final state, then if I can get to that final state somehow, then there is a way for me to drop out. I have some string that gets me there, and it'll end right there. So for every final state, I add a rule that goes to epsilon, because I need that variable to go away. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, so what was the main thing we talked about last week? Chomsky normal form. Chomsky normal form. So what is this Chomsky normal form? Wait, like a simplified Ah, yeah, so we're doing some kind of simplification, but of what? But what thing are we simplifying? The rules, right? So it's a simplification of what types of rules we can have. So what rules are we allowed to have? We have rules of the form one. Uh, yeah, we need to have variable to a single terminal. Yeah, that's, uh, that's no question. We've got to have that. But what else am I allowed to have? Uh, a variable to two other variables that are not itself? Uh, almost. So two variables. Right, oh, that they're not the start variable. Whatever name that might be. Uh, I'm not going to allow that here. Not here. And, and we'll see why. Uh, but what else do I need to have? Hey, uh, the start variable. Right, whatever the start variable I call it, it goes to the damage. So why do I do it this way? Why don't I, for example, say any variable can go to epsilon and the right hand side variables can also be the start variable? Why do I make this restriction? Yeah. Uh, you can get 
there are some languages that will have ambiguous numbers no matter what. So it, it removes ambiguity of what? Uh, of what string though? What strings are we using? Attempt to remove ambiguity of. Yeah, the empty string, right? If I have uh, any variable make epsilon and uh, a way to go back to the start variable, then I have, may have multiple ways of getting the empty string. So here I have exactly one way to make the empty string. I don't have any other way. Because once I go out to other variables, I can't come back to the start variable. But that tells us even, so that you think, okay, yeah, so what? Empty string, who cares? What does that tell me about the variables over here? They can't make the empty string, right? So they have to make something of the string I want. They have to make a character, right? Each one must make at least one character. Can't make the empty string. So every time I apply a rule, I get closer to the string that I want. And we'll see an example of why that works. But uh, that's a really nice property. What's, what's another reason why we might want to look at CNF grammars? What do the parse trees look like? They're binary, right? And why is that? Well, at any point, either we have a variable connected to a terminal, which point is a leaf already, or I have a variable going to exactly two variables. Oh, so that's nice. What else is interesting about these? How many of you have studied first ball sets in some way? It turns out it's much easier to get first and ball sets using CNF grammars than an arbitrary grammar. So that's another reason why we might want to study this. Yet another reason we want to study this is by analyzing the binary tree, we can show that some languages are not context free, which we'll eventually do. But for now, we have this one that we want to do. So what did we actually show about CNF? Can anything be converted into CNF? Yeah, we, sure, we showed an algorithm that took an arbitrary CFG and we did some rules, rules, and we got a grammar at the end that was in CNF. So what were the things that we did? What steps did we do? Make sure the start variable was not right. Yeah, so start <coughs> variable not on the right hand side. No problem. What was the next step? Nullable variables? Uh, something to do with nullable variables, but effectively I want to remove the epsilon rules, right? Because the only variable I want possibly to make the empty string is the start one. Well, if I have, so I, I might as well just write the grammar that we're going to convert anyway. So S to triple A or A A or B. A makes B base A S or epsilon B makes A S A or B. So here, and uh, S is the start. Uh, here I have a non start variable producing the empty string. So, but if I, for example, just said eliminate all of the epsilon rules, just delete them, what would the language of this grammar be if I did that? Can I make anything without this epsilon rule there? No, every single other rule has a variable on the right hand side, so I can't make anything. So I can't just eliminate unit rule, uh, I mean epsilon rule. So I'm just going to put this in quotes for what goal we want to do. So eliminate epsilon rules. A better word that I should use instead is simulate epsilon rules. And the way we're going to do that is by adding additional rules, we can simulate the epsilon rule that we want to get rid of. And so I wouldn't change the language at that point. What was the next step? Eliminate unit rules. And if I eliminated that unit rule, then I have no way to get to B. So I need to uh, be very careful what I say here, but eliminate quote unquote unit rules. What was the next step? So we're, we're almost there, right? We don't have exactly one variable. Uh, we don't have epsilon on the right hand side except for possibly the start variable, and the start variable is not on the right side. But what thing might we still have? Uh, 
right, I may have a mix of terminals and variables I could do here. And clearly, I don't want that to happen. So it might seem a little bit daunting to convert an arbitrary right-hand side like this into uh, having exactly two variables straight away, like Citra does. But what we're going to do this is in two stages. So uh, make sure right-hand side is either s to empty or s to start variable. Uh, single terminal or just variables, at least two variables. I can't have one because I just uh, did step three. But am I all the way to CNF here? No, because uh, I may have I may have exactly two variables, but and the other two are okay, but I may have more. So I need to break up long right hand sides. Okay. Yeah. Is that uh, less than or equal to or greater than or equal to two? Yeah. Okay. Sorry if my handwriting is atrocious. Well, why do we do these in this order? Why don't I do say I do step three, then I do two, then I do four, one, and then I finally do five. Why do I do it this way? Because if you end up having to go back and Right, yeah. If I do, say, um, uh, you can easily find a counterexample. But if I did it out of order, I may reintroduce earlier problems, and I don't want that to happen. So I do it in that way, this way for that reason. But what do I want to ensure about each step in the process? What do I not want to change? The language. Uh, the language, right? If I change the language, then I can't say that every CFG can be converted into CNF. So we need to make sure at every stage we don't change the language. So let's convert this thing to CNF. And just a little bit of word of warning, this grammar will get pretty big. So you'll probably need the back side of this. But uh, it's a, so let's just convert it to CML. So what's my first step to do? What steps do I need to do first? Well, I think the first step is um, uh, start variable not on the right hand side. Well, is it on the right hand side here? Yes. Yeah, it, it's there twice, so we better fix it. So uh, even if it wasn't, I still should do this anyway just to make sure it works for any grammar. So what was our way of fixing this? Right, I make a new start variable, but what rule should I add? Yeah, it goes to the old start variable. Okay, so that's a sound idea. So I'm going to call it S0. It's going to make S the old start variable. And I'm not going to modify the existing rules. So A or B. A goes to B, A, C, S or epsilon. B goes to A, S, A or B, B. So that was a pretty easy thing to do. But what should I check? What thing should I make sure about with this grammar in relation to the first one? I have to change the language, right? So let's make sure. Take any derivation in here. Can I make a derivation here? Well, yeah. Uh, since I didn't change any of the rules, the only thing I added was s0 goes to s, so just prepend that on the derivation that I would have done before. What about the other way? If I have a derivation here, can I get one up here? Well, yeah. Since every derivation in this grammar must start with s0 goes to s, then I, I can just delete s0 goes to s off of that derivation, and I have one up here. So I don't change the language. Okay. Any questions about this step? Okay, well that was pretty simple. 
What's my next step? Oh uh, yeah, well, uh, it should be simulated epsilon rules, but you're right. Uh, I have this non-start variable that goes to epsilon, and we can't have that. So how am I going to fix this? So any rule where an application A exists and so it goes to epsilon, you simulate multiple ways that that thing could epsilon. Right, but in order to reduce the complexity, what am I going to do? Right, the nullable variables. Okay, so find. So what is a nullable variable? It's it's actually in the name. You're able to null it out. So I think that means that if I have a variable a, in some number of rule applications, I can make epsilon out of it. So I can, in some way, make it disappear out. Okay. Well, is there any variable that's explicitly knowable? Hey, okay. yeah. So let, let's keep a list, which will come in handy. So I know A is knowable. Are any other ones knowable? Yes. yes, and how we know that is because of this role, where A could drop, it may make something else, but there is a way for A to drop out. So since all three of these can drop out, S could drop out. So I add S onto my list. Any other variables? No clue. Sure. S zero, right? Because S can drop out. So I better add S zero. Any other one? Well, let's see. The only other one could be B. Well, if I did this one, A and S are both knowable on my list. So they can drop out, but I still have a terminal there. Here, I don't know if B is nullable, so even if it was, I still have a terminal there. So, B is not nullable. Um, so, S0 can drop out, like, why don't we just put uh, or epsilon? We will. Okay. I'm just keeping a list to make our lives easy. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. So, <coughs> what we need to do is we need to simulate all possible ways for each of these nullable variables drop out. So let's see. S zoomed. And also, I'm going to keep all of the existing rules, even the A to epsilon one, for now. So I'm going to keep S0 to S. I'm never going to change that. But since S is nullable, it can drop out. So I'm going to add four epsilon. Even for variables that I don't want to have an epsilon rule, I'm going to add it anyway. So that at the end, I'm going to remove them. Okay. So I think we're done with S0. So let's do S. I'm going to keep all the existing rules there. Nothing's going to change about those rules. So AAA or AA or B, those are going to stay. Well, now I know that A is nullable. So what rules should I add on here? <coughs> Yeah, two A's, one A, and epsilon. But in general, this A can drop out or stay in independently. Drop out, stay in independently. Drop out, stay in independently. Oh, how many possibilities is that? Two times two times two. I think it's eight possibilities. But it's nice here because they're all the same variable, so I have a bunch of redundancies. Okay? So this is the case where they're all in. Now I need the case where one of them drops out and the other two stay. So I need double A there. I need the case where two of them drop out and one of them stays. So I need a single A. And I need the case where all three drop out, in which case I need epsilon. And I know I will get rid of it. Okay, so we handled all possibilities with this. Now let's do this one. Now I have the one where the A is there. Now I need the one where the A drops out, which is just a single term. So we did that one. What about B? It, it'll stay because B is not nullable. Okay. okay, let's do A. So remember, all of the existing rules are going to stay, no changes. So are A and S nullable? Yes. Yeah, they're on my list. So. I have the case where they're both in, 
Now I need the cases where one of them in, one of them is in, the other one is out, and I need the other case where both of them are out. So it may be the case that A drops out and S stays, so I should have B, C, S as well. I need the case where S drops out and A stays, so I need B, A, C. And I need the case where both of them drop out, in which case it's just B, C. Cool, let's do B. So, oh yeah, I should keep all the existing rules. Well, I know A and S are nullable, so I need the cases where one of them is in, one of them is out. So let's say A drops out, S stays. So I need S A. I need a case where A stays and S drops out. So I need capital A A. And I need the case where both of them drop out, in which case it's just the terminal A. So we handled all possibilities with this guy. What about this one? No, because B is not nullable. See, like every single point of this was just simulating all the possibilities as if that variable dropped out. And then now what's, what do I do at the end? Get rid of the epsilon rules that I don't want. Well, I want to keep S0 to epsilon. I, I am allowed to have that. But I'm going to delete the other ones. Because we've simulated them with other rules. Which is exactly what we want. Okay. Any questions about that? What's the next step? Oh yeah, we gotta eliminate the unit rules too. Do I have a unit rule? Yes. Yeah, how many do I have? Two, three. Three, right? I have S zero to S, S to B, and S to A. Okay, let's see. Let's try to eliminate these guys. How am I gonna do that? That that's true, but how am I going to systematically do this? What was the construct we used? Directed graph. Ah, yeah, the directed graph thing. And so, what are the vertices of this graph? I think we should make the variables the vertices. Well, those are S zero, S A B. So I'm going to make four vertices. S. So I hate to you, but this graph is going to be incredibly disappointing. But what are the directed edges going to be? S0 to S. Yeah, well, they're going to be the unit rules of the graph. So S0 to S, that's one of them. And uh, S to B, S to A. So I should add those as units. And there are no other unit rules, so we're good there. I told you, it's not very exciting. But how am I going to use this graph to help? So we can, yeah, we can do bottom up. What are these two vertices called? First of all, Yeah, what's on a tree? A leaf, right? So these things are leaves. Does that mean they have no unit rolls attached to them? Yeah, A has no unit rolls, B has no unit rolls. Ah, so how is that going to help me? Well, maybe what we can do is, it seems like if I did say S to B, then I can just jump straight down here. I don't even need to go through this B route. So let's just simulate it. So how am I going to simulate that? Maybe what I can do is copy all of these rules up to where this B is. Right, because it's just shortcutting the path I would have went through anyway. So maybe let's do that. So let's build this uh, from bottom up. So this is where the CFG starts to get a little big. That's a little in quotes, but ASA or so these rules are not going to change. A's rules are not going to change either.
and S's non-unit rules are still going to be there. <coughs> So I put all of the non-unit rules there. So now, what I need to do is copy the B rules up. So let's do that. So A, S, A, or B, B, or S, A, or A, A, or I have A already there, so that's good for that. So I'm simulating the S to B rule by just taking the rule, the right hand side of B up to there. So now I need to simulate S to A. Well, how do I do that? Copy the rules of A. Up. So, let's add the rules of A. BACS or BCS or BAC or BCS. Okie dokie. So, in our graph now, We've handled these two edges. So we're done. Okay. Do we still have an edge in this graph? Yes. Yeah, we have an S0 to S. So how in the world am I going to do that? Copy S's rules up. Do you think I want to rewrite that? No. So what I'm going to do is S0 to Oh, wait, did I? Get Ah, yeah, I introduced an error, right? Let's see. So I need to add four epsilon. So just be careful in doing something like this that you don't omit that you don't omit rules that you already have. Okay. But the idea is clear that or should be that I, if I have a unit rule, I just simulate it by putting the right hand side up here up to here. And therefore, I get exactly what I want. Okay. Any questions about this? Yeah. What about S and S arrow? Well, what did I miss? Oh, like I just kind of you're including like all the rule of S. Yeah, because uh, I want to eliminate the unit rule. Okay. So I take oh, yeah. the right hand side of that. I got it. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. What's the next step? I need to, uh, so the fourth step is, let's look on our list, make sure the right hand side is either S to, start variable goes to empty, we got that. Single terminal, we have some occurrences of that. Or at least two variables. Well, I have some of those, but some of the other ones are mixes of variables and terminals. And I see at least two of them that are just two terminals. And I can't have that. So how am I gonna fix that? Yeah, it'll create new rules and what's on the left side of those rules? New variables. New variables. Cool. So that's an idea. Let's try it. So let's do step four. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is have a new variable for each of the terminals. Well, the terminals are little a, little b, little c. So I'm going to add rules, I'm uh, sorry, variables, use of a, use of b, and use of c, with rules, use of a goes to a, use of b goes to b, and use of c goes to c. Okay. And so now, what do we have to do with this? These variables? Plug them back in. Let's do that. And I promise this is the last time I write down the grammar as a whole. So B goes to, so now I have A, S, but now I want just variables, so I should put use of A. And I promise I didn't do this on purpose. <laughs> and uh, another funny joke. Oh. Uh, another funny joke I always like to say that. Um, you use uh, U of A is so incompetent they can only produce one character. <laughs> all right, uh, all right. So the other rule is uh, B goes to B B. So B use of B. I guess I'm a bug. Uh, S use of A. Uh, 
A U sub A, and should I replace this little A? No. No, because that would introduce A? <coughs> Integral. Okay. So I'm not going to do that. A is going to produce uh, U sub B, A U sub C, S, or U sub B, U sub C, S, or U sub B, A, U sub C, or U sub B, U sub C. Okie dokie, let's move on to S. Triple A, not going to touch it. Uh, U sub A, A, or double A, leave the terminal alone. Another ASU, uh, B, U sub B, uh, S, U sub A, A, U sub A. I know, sorry, it's long. Uh, use of B, A, use of C, S, or use of B, use of C, S, or use of B, A, use of C, or use of B, use of C. And it's pretty obvious that S0 is going to go to ditto or epsilon. What's the downside of using C and F? T tons of rules, right? So th 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 there's a trade-off here, right? I have simplicity of what the rules can look like, and I have all these nice properties, but I have a ton of rules. So th there's a nice trade-off there. But the idea is clear. Um, I want it to come down to two, vari uh, to two variables. Uh, and so the partial step to get there is just have all variables or just a single terminal. And we've been Yeah, because if I did that, I would reintroduce a unit rule. Because it's a single variable. Got it. Mm -hmm. yeah. But for the ones, uh, it's a good question. For the ones that were two terminals, I turned those into variables. Because I can't have two terminals in the right hand side. For, for the rules that already are in the form that I want, I'm not going to touch those. Okay? Any questions about this? But yeah, that, that's a nice thing about these five steps is that. Once you have a rule into this form, you'll never touch it, which is kind of nice. What's the fifth step? Break up, right -hand Break up the long right-hand sides. So what does it mean to be a long right-hand side? Uh, if I have more than, if I have at least three variables on the right-hand side. Well, I definitely have that. I have things with four, with four to do. So let's fix all that stuff. So this is the part where you think I go crazy in writing all these out, but let's do it anyway. So for purely for the interest of time and space and all of our sanity, um, I'm gonna, so what you should do every single time is make new variables every single time, but, and so it helps with correctness, but I'm gonna reuse variables. So let's see. So the first one I see is S0 goes to three A's, I gotta fix that. So S0 to 3 A's. So, uh, and here's another thing. I'm going to keep all of the existing conforming rules, but the other ones I'm going to do this replace. So I'm going to add rules and delete the one on the left-hand side. So I'm going to delete this rule, replace it with other stuff. Well, how am I going to uh, simulate this rule? S0 goes to triple A. I gotta have exactly two variables on the right hand side. So, so maybe what we could do to get this down to two is to have a, a new variable make two A's. Okay? So let's have S0 make a brand new variable X1A, and X1 is gonna make double A. And the reason that we want this to be a brand new variable every time, I'm not going to do it, but the reason we want it that way, is that if I wanted to apply this rule, there's only one way in and only one way out. Right? There's no other x whatever used before. It's a brand new variable. Once I start in here, I have to finish out using the exact same way I, I, I did with this uh, rule. So there's only one way in, one way out. 
All right, so we're done with that guy. S0 to these two, good. These two, good, good. Oh, and you sub A, I need to fix that. So S0 to U, uh, not USA, ASU sub A. So I, I can't use X1, so I'm gonna use a brand new variable X2, U sub A, and uh, X2 is gonna make uh, A. So that's good, 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 good. Oh, I have a four now. So how do I do a four variable one? I have two new variables and three ones. So S0 to uh, U sub B, A, U sub C, S, that's going to be replaced with S0, let's see, X3, S. X3 is going to make uh, the first three. So I got to think x4 u sub c and x4 is going to make u sub b. Okay. Okay. So that long one's done. u sub c b u sub c s. So I got to make, I don't have a u b u c one yet. So I'm going to make uh, x5 s, and x5 is u b u c. Now's the point where you start to think I'm going crazy. So we're starting to go crazy. Uh, u b a u c. Do I have a u b a? I don't think so. So I got to add another one. Uh, what am I going to do? Oh, I do. I have x4. Okay. So X4 can already make these two. So I'm just going to have X4 use of C. Okay. And then the last one is good, so we're good there. And the good thing is, since S is the exact same stuff as S0, I can just say S is done in a similar way. I don't want to rewrite all that. But with S on the left hand side of it instead of S0. Um, so I should say that. Instead, with S on left hand side, instead, I know I said instead twice, but uh, instead of S0. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay, so we did those two, so and those three are good. So I need to do A. Well, I did that one already, so let's just name these. One, two, three, four, five. So this one, uh, A to U, A, oh, sorry, U, B, A, U, C, S, that's going to be done as uh, number three with a on left hand side. Uh, this guy I already did. A to U B U C S. That one I did number four. Uh, this one, did I do it? Yeah, I did number five. So A to so I did U B A U C. That's done as number five. And this is absolutely a way to write it this way, if, if you have too many. Uh, a to that one is good. B is not good. So B to A, yes, U, A. And I did that one already as number two. Uh, this one's good, 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 fine, good. Cool. So just remember. This rule on the left hand side is going to be replaced with the variables, the brand new variables, and rules over here. Okay. But I think we actually got there. Uh, let's check. <laughs> check. <Yeah. laughs> check. But uh, the only ones we replaced are ones that didn't conform to the rules. Uh, the other ones were perfectly fine. And so all of the ones over here, we do have exactly two variables. And as we did, so we actually get it. But let's make sure: did we change the language or not? Well, 
if we used a rule that uh, did conform to the rules, that those didn't change, so that there's nothing wrong with that. But if we used uh, one that was changed, then um, if we use new variables every time, so I, we did it here, but let's assume we did, then once we apply a rule, there's only one way out, and so therefore I get the exact same thing. Okay. Any questions about all this? That's a no. step where you say number two, and then write that same thing. That's good. Well, with, you should say with B on the left-hand side. But, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I just did it for the interest of time and space. Yeah. So, if there's one of these on the exam, uh, on the midterm, is it going to be anywhere near as long as oh, this one? No, no. Thank you. Okay. I, I, I wouldn't. I, well, well, I haven't seen it, so I have no idea. But uh, I, I honestly, I honestly <laughs> doubt it. Okay. So it could, well, well, it took like 40 minutes to do. Yeah. For, for me to do. So, oh. don't worry about it. Okay. Any other questions? So let's do uh, what's the next one. Or, uh, thankfully, it's not another CMS conversion. But uh, so there's a small typo in number two. It should say a CFG in CNF. Uh, I just say an arbitrary CFG. It has to be in CNF here. So uh, let's solve this one. So it says that. Uh, I have a CFG G in C and F, uh, a non empty W in the language of the grammar. So if the grammar can derive it, then every derivation of W takes uh, two times, well, I should say, with. The length of W is n, uh, two n minus one rule application. Okay. I'll, I'll address the issue of the empty string later, but for right now, assume a non empty string, then I have exactly two n minus one applications if n is the length of the string. So, why is that true? Well, let's think of a derivation of, let's just say the string w is w1, w2, up to wn. Now, let's think of a derivation. Let's say, well, it has to start with variable s, always. It'll never not start with variable s. But what do we know about variables uh, other than a start? They have to produce a character at least of the string, right? They always have to, okay? So this string is derivable in this grammar, right? Because I said it's in the language of the grammar. So what do we know? Well, this variable is gonna produce two variables, let's say, A and B, and then it's gonna keep, keep on going. And then one derivation might be, I'm gonna have N variables in a row and then at that point, I'm just going to have the first variable make the first terminal because uh, each variable can only make one terminal uh, at a time. Second one make the second terminal. Third one make the third terminal of the string all the way until the end. So let's say it makes up to w1. So this is a variable w2 up to wn. So how many derivations did it, uh, rule applications did it take to get from S to this long sequence of variables? Well, how many variables do I add each step? One, right? How many did I start with? One. How many did I end with? N. So how many did that take? N minus, N minus one. So this took N minus one for this part. But now, i got to get to my string of terminals here. But I, I only have variables now. So what do I do? Well, whatever one I pick, I'm going to make it drop out to be a terminal, right? So I'm going to have, say, w1 go to be the first character. And I can only do one variable at a time. So I'm going to do the first one, then I'm going to do the second one, et cetera, until I have the full string of 
how many rule applications does that take? N. N, right? Because each time I'm, I can only produce one character <coughs> and nothing else, so this takes N steps. So, in total, 2n minus 1. Would the empty string fall in this umbrella? What would 2n minus 1 be for the empty string? N minus 1. Can I have minus 1 rule applications? No. <laughs> no, right? So, what is the rule with the empty string? How many does it take to get the empty string? Exactly one. How do you know that? <laughs> because there's no other way to make the empty string. So, no matter what string you have, you know exactly how many rule applications it takes to make that string. So, now actually you know how high the parse tree is, how wide the parse tree is, and all that stuff. Which is actually pretty interesting. But, do you see how we were able to do that? Okay. Any questions about that? So I think we have like four minutes. So I actually haven't done this one, but let's see. <coughs> let's try to do number three, I don't remember. So, um, and there's no way I can do it in four minutes. So, but let's think about it at least. So my goal is I have a CFG and I want to uh, see if I can make a uh, derivation for it. Here I assume that W can be made, but I want to ask the question, can I make this string? Okay. Well, let's see. Well, if it's the empty string, how easy is that question? It seems pretty easy. If, what do I assume about the grammar? Uh, what's an easy way to check for that? If it's in CNF. Oh. Right? If it's in CNF, my life is a lot easier. How does it take a finite amount of time to convert a CFG into CNF? Yeah. So it takes a finite amount of time. So empty string, uh, convert to, this is actually the fourth question on the back that actually answers it, but convert to CNF, see if S to epsilon is a rule, and that's it. Pretty simple. Okay. But what if it isn't empty? What am I going to do then? Well, let's see. Well, if we look at the parse tree, S is going to have to make two variables. Well, assume it's not a single character. It's going to make two term, uh, variables, A and B, and then they're going to make some parse tree. And then the leads of the parse tree are going to be W1, W2, all the way to W1. Well, let's see. What do I know about the variables A and B in terms of making a string? They have to make a string, right? They have to. Can they make epsilon? No, because they're not the start variable. So they must make something of the string. Can these trees cross? No. So there must be some point in the middle that A makes W1 up to, say, WI. B makes WI plus 1 to WN. But how do I figure out where that split is? And the, the key, uh, I won't be able to answer that in time, but the key answer is dynamic programming, if you know what that is, and just try all possible splits. And that's essentially how that one works. Work bottom up, and then you have all the way up to the top. Any other questions? All right, I'll, I guess I'll see you later. <laughs>